everyone welcome back uh, welcome to the Claire Newberry knitting school um, I've had a few students ask me for um, how to or well, how to knit it in uh, beads as we're uh, knitting rather than sewing them on afterwards um, so we're going to be looking at how to apply beads as we're as we're going along as we're knitting okay so um, I've got a couple of samples to show you here okay so this is one that I've done okay so that's using just regular beads actually on a very very fine silk there and you'll notice it's quite a big open stitch so I was on about a tension six to eight there I think if I remember rightly okay so we're looking at sort of quite drapey sort of open fabrics okay this is actually all over it did take quite a long time to do that um, but you don't have to do it all over you can just um, maybe do borders or maybe look at um, uh, certain areas where you want the beading uh, to be um, but uh, yeah it's, it's a really nice te tactile kind of fabric it's one of those that you want to kind of sort of play with a little bit and sort of uh, you know sort of hold in your hand it's quite tactile and, and quite nice to sort of handle um, but uh, yeah so we're, look we're going to be looking at how to apply some beads onto our knitting okay and um, you can also use sequins as well so in here I have this page here. Okay, so we're just looking at sequins there. So they're just regular, ir like iridescent sequins. So I was looking at kind of uh, fish scales and that sort of thing. Um, and that's on a kind of um, a, like a half brick repeat. So I've put them in sort of every other, not every one, every row or every stitch or anything like that. Um, that would take uh, an awful long time to do. Uh, but you could do it, but it would, uh, it would take a long time. Okay. Um, so yeah, so sequins work quite well as well. Don't use anything that's going to damage your machine. Okay, and um, I'm going to be using quite a loose uh, tension as well on the knitting machine when I'm knitting. So I'm on tension eight and I'm using a two thirties yarn, just one end of two thirties yarn. So, um, so as you can imagine, it's, it's quite an open um, fabric. Okay, so I'm just gonna tilt the camera down. So hopefully you can see the knitting there. Okay, and I've got a very small crochet hook. Okay, so that is 0.6 of a mil. Okay, so it's very tiny. It's got a, like a little sort of tiny little hook on the end of the of the um, the crochet hook there. Okay, um, as I say, it's a 0.6 of a millimeter. Um, and you can get them from good haberdashery shops or you may have to get them online. I think I got this one from possibly John Lewis or somewhere. Um, so have a little hunt around and see what you can um, find. But you, you need the probably I think this is probably the smallest crochet hook you can get. So um, so do have a little hunt around for those. Um, and I've got some knitting beads here. And these are specific knitting beads, actually. But as I say, you don't have to have, um, you know, specific ones. These are just have a slightly larger hole. OK, so I don't know whether you can see there if I can pick up one of the beads with the tool there. OK, so I'm able to thread it onto the crochet hook. OK, so I'm just going to pop one on there. When you get sort of a bit more au fait with the technique, you can have several beads there and use it kind of like a bit like a hopper. Um, but we're just going to use them singularly for now because it's a little bit easier to handle. Okay, so I've got the bead on to the crochet hook there. Okay, I've knitted, um, oh, I don't know, about uh, 20 rows there. And you can see how large the stitch is. Okay, so we don't want any, uh, we don't want tiny stitches or tight stitches because that's going to uh, damage the knitting um, and also possibly damage the bead as well so keep it really open and really slack okay so when you're ready to do your beading um, you can go in and you can go in anywhere actually um, and I'm just going to come into the middle here and using the crochet hook I'm going to lift off one of those stitches and keep it taut okay and then drop the bead down onto the stitch there OK, so the bead has gone from the crochet hook onto the bead. OK, so the bead is kind of straddling the whole stitch. OK, so when you're happy with that, again, keep everything under tension. I'm going to pop that stitch back onto the hook of the needle that it came from. And the bead is trapped in the knitting there. OK, and you can see it's not too big. It's not going to cause any problems with the uh, gate pegs or underneath here on the carriage itself okay 
So that's one done. So then I'm coming in and picking up another one. I've just got them handy here on the knitting machine at the back there. And again, I've threaded the bead onto the crochet hook and I wouldn't go next to it. I'm going to go to the next one, leave one stitch and then go on to the next one. So every other stitch I'm going to do. So I'm lifting off that stitch using the crochet hook. Keep everything taut. Don't let it drop. OK, then you can release the bead down onto the stitch and then replace the stitch with the bead trapped in there. So that's bead number two. And then I'm coming in with another bead, just have them handy. OK, and again, that's one threaded onto the crochet hook there. And then again, I'm leaving one in between and then picking up the next stitch. Keep everything nice and taut. Drop that bead down onto the stitch there and then replace the stitch gently there. So keep everything nice and taut. Picking up a fourth bead there. OK, so that's on the tool there. And I'm going in again, picking up a stitch. OK, using the tool, keeping everything nice and taut. Don't let it um, drop at all, that stitch. OK, so I've still got that, the hook of the crochet is hooked onto the stitch there. And then when you're ready, you can rehang that stitch. OK, so that's four beads there that I've done. Obviously, you can do any kind of pattern, um, but I would keep a little bit of distance in between each bead because otherwise um, you have danger of um, the bead um, sort of break, bursting the yarn. And that's not what you want at all, because all of that lovely hard work that you've done will literally unravel and the beads will fall on the floor. OK, so um, try and keep it simple. Um, try and keep this, the stitch size really loose. I say I've got an, a tension eight here. My yarn is a two thirties. So it's more air than stitches. OK, so that's what you've got to remember. OK, so I'm quite happy with that. So nice and gently. Um, and if you feel any resistance, just stop. But nice and slowly go over those stitches. OK, and hopefully just move you back because we're going to collide with the carriage if we don't. OK, and hopefully you can see those beads there. Some of them do get caught behind the gate peg, but if they're small enough, they can pop, they pop back out again. OK, so you can see that the beads are actually trapped in the knitting. OK, so you don't, there's no sewing at all with this technique. Um, and um, yeah, so that is how you would do the basic bead. Obviously, you could play around with different uh, patterns, different beads. Um, you might uh, try some different types of sequins as well. Keep the sequins quite small again. You know, you don't want it to interfere with the knitting machine itself because um, that might be a problem and you may break the machine using that and, and also damage the knitting as well. So all of that hard work uh, may come to nothing. OK, so I would do a couple of rows and then carry on with another um, beading sequence. So again, you can build up a pattern or you can have them random You can have different coloured ones. You could stripe the yarn. Um, you could be doing ladders in there as well, and you may incorporate things like little cables in there as well. So you could get quite elaborate with this. Um, it, it could be quite ornate um, and it could be quite, um, quite precious and it could also almost be, you know, pieces of jewellery or neck pieces or, or arm pieces or whatever. Um, so it, it's something which is um, highly decorative. It's a slow process. Um, obviously, the more you do, the quicker you become. But uh, just be aware that, um, you know, don't try and embark on um, uh, knitting, you know, your whole garment in beads because uh, it will take you probably dates to do it, unless you've got dates. So that's fine. Obviously do that. But um, but just be aware that it does take a long time to do. But it's quite a sort of therapy. Once you get it going and, and you can see what the, the on the single bed here, you can see, um, you know, the fabric growing and the pattern growing as well. So you can try different things and you can see what's going on. It's not one of those that you can't see until you've knitted you know, several um, inches or whatever. Um, so, you know, so, so what, what you see is what you get kind of thing with this technique. So that, that's always good. So it means that you can kind of literally sort of go in and place them where you want them. OK, so have fun with that. Uh, see how you get on with that one. It's a really nice technique. It's a bit fiddly um, and, you know, you may drop the odd, odd bead. Uh, lose the odd bead. Um, but uh, yeah, I think once you get the hang of it, it's quite a, a nice little technique to know. OK. All right. So have fun knitting. Take care. Bye.